it. I got a bit of a drive here. So we're going to talk about uh, my work history and what led me to starting Indiana Mobile Diesel. So we've covered it in a couple live streams, but one of the big things is I've worked for quite a few different shops and I've seen every wrong way out there to run a business. Nobody treats their customer right. Nobody wants to stand behind their work. Nobody wants to put out quality work anymore. And that always bugged me. So, you know, my last job before this, I was a uh, field service tech for a MCFA dealership, which is Caterpillar Forklifts. You know, I'm in the shop maybe an hour a week, for the most part, just on my own. And, and at that point, all they were providing was a truck and the work. And I kind of just decided it was time to do it myself. I was getting a little fed up of dealing with some of the office politics there. And that's when I started my business at the beginning of this year. But going back from there, um, my first job was at a shop called Martin's Auto Care in Belleville, Indiana. I started there when I was 16 years old as kind of a shop apprentice and doing some general line work, a little bit of brake suspension, oil changes, stuff like that, and then helping their other techs, you know, with engine swaps, transmission swaps, stuff like that. You know, things where it's nice to have a second set of hands. Um, I actually started there the last half of my sophomore year of high school. Actually, it was even before I had my driver's license. Um, for the first month, I had to get driven to work. Then I got my license. Um, just kept working there. Uh, my junior and senior year of high school, I went to the Area 31 Career Center at Ben Davis High School. So for half the day, for both those years, I would leave my high school, go to the Career Center, and I was in a vocational school for automotive repair. I did both years of that. Um, the last half of your senior year, if your grades are high enough, you could co-op. So you get out of school at around lunchtime, and then you just, I went to work for the rest of the day. I did that all through high school. Um, while I was there, I competed in Ford AAA, Skills USA, and then Edelbrock had a carburetor rebuilding contest. I did all that stuff. Anything extracurricular I could do there, I did. Um, and I got some decent scholarships through there to go to school uh, at a bunch of different automotive schools. But I had a job offer right out of high school to start working at a Chevy dealership and making decent money. So I uh, decided that you know I was gonna try to go to work. If it didn't work out or if I felt like I didn't know what I was doing, I can always go to school later. I figured I'd give it a shot and see what I could do coming out of high school. Um, I worked at the Chevy dealership for a few months really quickly found out that, you know, coming from an independent shop, a dealership is a big change, and I'm not a fan of dealership life. I really don't like it. I hate flat rate. Uh, I hate all the politics and BS you have to deal with at a dealership. I just want to go to work and fix things. I don't want to deal with all the other stuff. So, I ended up leaving there, and I went back to Martin's. I uh, worked at Martin's then, pretty much straight through until I moved up to the Chicago area. Uh, my family is originally from Northwest Indiana. We moved down to the Indianapolis area when I was about five. And not long after high school, maybe a year, year and a half, I ended up moving back up to Chicago area. And I worked for a company called Zeman Homes. Um, I was a mechanic for them and I was in their maintenance department. So I worked on trucks and tractors when they were down. And when they weren't, I did any type of facility maintenance. I remodeled trailers, I remodeled apartments, I put in gas mains, water mains, sewer mains. I've got to run a sewer jetter, which if you've never done that, it's over like a thousand PSI jet that blows out sewers. Really fun to play with. Um, I plowed snow. I've done concrete work. I did everything there. You know, I actually kind of enjoyed it. It was nice. Every day was something new. But the longer I was there, the less and less truck and tractor work there was. They were so far behind, they stopped letting me do stuff. And they started sending them out to shops to do so they could have me help me out on other projects. But I worked up there. Uh, that's the only job I had while I was up there. And after uh, a year and a half, two years or so, I kind of missed home and decided it was time to move back to Indy. When I came back, I went straight back to Martin's. Uh, if you keep a track, that is the third time I worked at that shop. And I worked there for a while and I mean, it wasn't bad, but the money was never great there. I mean, it, it's out in the middle of nowhere. They don't pay a lot. But I do get to work on a lot of stuff there. You know, I, I've worked on everything from little Kubota diesel tractors to semis to dump trucks to Porsches 
to, you know, uh, farm trucks. I mean, everything came through that shop. And they wouldn't say no to working on anything. So I worked there again. And it was just getting to the point with them that the money wasn't there. And I had an opportunity to go to Andy Moore Ford in Plainfield, Indiana, Indiana's largest Ford dealership. And I worked there. I went there. I was the electrical technician for that dealership. When I started, there were two of us. One of them left, and for a while, I was lead electrical tech. And then the other one returned. He left and went to Mercedes for a little while and realized that Mercedes just wasn't for him. Um, I learned a lot there. That really brought up my electrical diagnosis abilities. I mean, I was maybe average at best when I came in there on my electrical diag. And... You know, now there's nothing electrical that scares me for diagnosis. I, I really came up a lot when I was there. But getting towards the end of working there, um, I wanted to come out of just doing electrical and get into some heavy line. I like doing engine work. And I had been pushing for a while with the manager to try to get into the diesel department because I love diesel. And they just weren't having it. And I had an opportunity to go to TMC, which is a fleet shop for a trucking company. Uh, I sat and talked with them for a while, and they had really sold that up to be the perfect job. And right after starting there, I realized that almost none of what they told me was true. It was nothing like what they had, you know, said. I had asked to see some of the work orders, to see what their average workflow looks like. I clearly asked them what type of work we do in shop, what gets sent out, you know, on average, what kind of time am I going to spend doing real work versus, you know, buffing paint wheels and doing, you know, lights and minor stuff. And they had talked it up like it's a pretty even split, that we would do some big work there. And every time I had diagnosed something there that was a bigger problem, they pretty much just said, don't worry about it. We're not going to fix that. It's not worth it. Um, I was only there for three months. Uh, towards the end of it, I had an opportunity to go to Bill Estes Ford in Brownsburg, Indiana, because I still had a bunch of current Ford certifications and training. And they were looking to expand their diesel department. They had one diesel technician and one apprentice, and they really wanted to crank up their diesel work. Uh, they were getting a bigger market share in the area than they needed the people. So I went on there as a diesel tech. Um, I had someone working underneath me as an apprentice while I was there. Maybe three months, four months into it, the other diesel technician had left to go to another dealership, and I got thrown in as lead diesel tech. And I held that position right up until just before I left, when that technician had returned. And uh, the, the whole deal behind him returning was kind of shady. There was a large cash bonus to return. He got his lead position back, which means I had to take a pay cut, obviously, since I wasn't lead anymore. Which, to be fair, he did have more time and more experience, but I also don't feel like that was the right way to handle the situation. Wasn't too happy. And then I went to Weezy. That was the last job before I went to work for myself. Worked for Weezy USA for about a year and a half as a field service tech. I was also the field trainer. So if anyone came in and had never been a field tech before, they usually rode with me for a day or two to kind of get used to being out in the field and working on their own. Uh, we were a dealership for pretty much anything. Uh, MCFA, that's Mitsubishi Caterpillar Forklifts of America. We were a Nissan Unicarrier forklift dealer. We were a dealer for Calmar. Uh, for the big forklifts and the spotter trucks. We were a dealer for Columbia Carts, Hoist Forklifts, which are really odd specialty forklifts. They build a lot of like the negative lift, like the Titan series. That was what lowers boats into the water at docks. They do a lot of solid tire, well they're called cushion tire, but solid tire forklifts with heavy lift ratings. Uh, I don't know why anyone buys them, but they do. But we worked on those. Um, we were a JLG dealer. Yeah, I mean, I worked on a lot of stuff there. I was certified to inspect everything. Um, and I was a field tech for them. I, I, I really enjoyed working there. Just like I said, the office politics and some stuff like that played into my decision to leave. And I had started doing more and more work on the side leading up to that. And it was just getting to the point where I couldn't keep working a day job and doing the work I was doing on the side. Um, Chris... My friend that owns Carter's Garage has owned a shop for years. I talked to him some about what it takes as far as getting insurance and all that stuff set up. And 
and I talked to my parents a little bit. I decided that it was just time, you know. I, I For a long time, I was against the idea of having a business. But it's honestly been one of my best decisions I think I've ever made. I have a lot more free time. I have a lot more freedom. I'm making more money. And I enjoy what I do. Um, I get to work on a variety of stuff again, which I've missed that since I've left independent shops. And, yeah, I mean, so far, we've just been growing. And, you know... I have a friend who works part-time with me. He helps me out. And we're really quickly approaching the point where we're going to have to have another full-time guy on with me. That we can't just have, you know, me full-time and somebody else part-time. And, you know, the more and more I look, the more work we have out there to do. Right now, we're talking a deal out with somebody about possibly going down to Texas and in-framing a ton of generators. And, you know, if I do that, I'm going to need at least another full-time guy, if not two more full-time guys, just to keep up with the generator demand. We're trying to get that contract negotiated, and hopefully we get the bid on that one. But it's been great so far. You know, I, I really enjoy what I do. And, you know, I've had a YouTube channel forever. I've never done anything with it. And that's another thing that I started messing with more now that I'm out of the shop, which I really do wish I would have made videos back when I was in the dealership, because there's a lot of good stuff I could have showed you guys back there, but... Even now, if you just see the variety of stuff that I work on, you never know what it's going to be from day to day. And I love that. But that's kind of the history of what got me to Indiana Mobile Diesel and what made me want to start a business. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave questions. You know, I'll answer anything I can. Um, if you're not following us, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Indiana Mobile Diesel. If you want to follow me, you can follow me on Snapchat or Instagram at Spike383. Those are all in the end card. We also have the phone number and email address from the shop always in the end of our videos. If you guys are in the Indiana area and need any work done, or even if you're a little farther out, we travel. Um, feel free to get a hold of us. I will admit I'm not the best at answering the shop phone. Um, leave a voicemail and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Usually it's a day or so. Uh, when I'm working, I almost never have it on me. It's usually in my truck. And then half the time I forget it in the truck afterwards. So I will get back to you. You guys can't see it, but there's a really nice versatile tractor sitting out in the field over there. I got a little distracted. Anyway, yeah, you can hit us up anytime. We can, you know, shoot you guys a quote and at least give you an idea of what something would be. If you're running into any problems on your projects, feel free to hit us up and we can see if we can help you get through any hard spots you're hitting. You know, I'm more than happy to share my knowledge with anybody that needs something done. Um, we have a Patreon. Uh, it's part of our Pay It Forward program that we're doing. If you guys are interested, you can head over there and check it out got a video on the topic that explains what we're doing. Other than that, I think that's about it for today. Have a good one, guys. See you later.